A huge case opening up in California, opening statements beginning this hour for the father and son accused in connection to Kristen Smart's death. The college freshman went missing back in two, 1996. Paul and Ruben Flores will be tried at the same time, but they'll have two separate juries. This is a case people have been following for decades, literally. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Boehner is in Monterey County and joins us from outside the courthouse in Salinas, California. Chanley, great to see you. Opening statements, what are we expecting? Hey, great to be with you this morning, Ted. So about an hour ago, the prosecutor and the lead detective arrived into this courthouse behind me, and we're hearing from inside. All the parties are in. Opening statements will begin at any moment. No cameras in the courtroom for this trial. There is a still photographer. There's an overflow room of which I have access to. I got here really early to get access to that courtroom overflow room, and we have our producer inside the courtroom. So we have it covered all day today for day one of Kristen Smart. We are expecting, of course, Paul Flores's opening statements to take place first. What's unique about this trial, there are two separate juries, one for Paul Flores, accused of Kristen Smart's murder, one for his father, a Ruben Flores, who's accused of being an accessory after the fact with helping hide Kristen's remains, allegedly. So two separate juries means this is going to be a long trial. So only Paul's jury will be in there first. And then for Ruben's opening, Ted, uh, Ruben's jury will then enter the courtroom for his defense team's opening statement. And so it's going to be a day of really some graphic details and, and some revealing facts because remember there was a protective order on this case virtually from the beginning. So all the parties and most of the court docu documents have been sealed for over the last year and a half or so. So we may be learning a lot new of new information as opening statements unfold. Absolutely. 26 years. The Smart family has been waiting for this day, waiting for justice for Kristen, who went missing. And to remind our viewers, Paul Flores was the last individual to see Kristen alive. That's right. And he was, we expect to see, uh, excuse me, to hear from that witness who was the last one to see Paul with Kristen Smart the evening of May 25th after a party. She appeared intoxicated. And so, of course, his defense says there's no even evidence that Kristen Smart was even murdered. And like you said, this has been 26 years in the making with forensics, uh, cadaver dogs, as well as uh, soil experts because they allege that the remains were hidden in Ruben Flores's backyard for years and then moved. So it's a very circumstantial case. The prosecution is going to have to piece together in their opening statement today, but if you take it all together collectively, it, it is a strong prosecution case against Paul Flores, but his defense team does have a lot to work with, Ted. Yeah, you know, just the time of that has expired in the 26 years. You can just feel that that's going to be a theme in the open. Uh, and this is a case, again, for our viewers. We don't have cameras in the courtroom, and that's why we have Chanley there. And uh, she is going to basically be our eyes and ears uh, throughout this trial, starting today with the opening statements. Kristen Smart um, has been part of the Central Coast history for the last 26 years. They've moved this case from the Central Coast down of Monterey County. Chanley, thank you. We'll let you get into the overflow room with your pass and uh, be talking with you uh, throughout the day in the coming weeks ahead. Huge trial starting up in California.